P-I-N-G, ping. If you're an IT professional, specifically in an entry level role, you may be using the ping command hundreds of times a day. Maybe not a hundred, but a couple of times a day more than a couple of times a day. It's a very useful command and it can help you tremendously when it comes to troubleshooting. So what is the ping command? To learn more about ping, let's go ahead and open up the Windows command prompt by running command. Run command obeys, All right, so from your Windows desktop, you're gonna go to the start menu and you could just type in CMD and that's gonna open up the command prompt. If you watched our last video where we went over command series basics, which was a few months ago, we talked about IP config. And as a refresh, this is what IP config does. It shows you your IPv6 address, your IPv4 address, your subnet mask, and your default gateway, which can be helpful in this next series that we're gonna talk about, which is ping, P-I-N-G. P-I-N-G lets you communicate with other devices on your network and outside of your network. And it is probably one of the most used commands when it comes to troubleshooting devices in an organization or business environment, or more specifically, a Windows business environment or business Windows environment. It's one of the most widely used commands in an entry-level IT role. And gosh, you know what? Even further than that, system administrators, network administrators, cloud administrators, they are all using the ping command in everything that they're doing because what this does is allows communication between devices. So think of ping as you saying hello to somebody. You are gonna ping somebody else, right? You know where that person's at. Maybe you are pinging somebody via telephone, via text message, via email, via a Teams message or a Slack message. You've probably heard that term where you ping somebody in that way. Well, using the ping command on a computer, that's very much the same way. And what we could do with this is actually ping different websites. Or if you are in a business environment, you can also ping other devices inside of your network. And what that actually allows you to do is see if those devices are on the network. Are they able to communicate with you or not? So sending the ping command is like sending a relay message to them. Like, hey, hello, are you there? And when you ping that device, it will respond back to you. It should send you some type of data back. So let's show you what this looks like in the command prompt. We are going to go ahead and just ping Google because everybody knows what Google is and Google is always online. So what we could do in our command prompt is type in P-I-N-G and then we could type in www.google.com and then just hit enter. And now what we see is gonna, it's pinging www, we can't even talk, but www.google.com and it shows the IP address that it is communicating with from the Google servers. Now, Google has plenty of servers, plenty of IP addresses. So this is not always going to be the same by any means. It might be different at times, but it shows that IP address there. And then below that, it says reply from 172.253.62.99, which would be look above, that's Google's IP address. So that's Google's address out on the internet without the actual domain name, without that www. So basically what the domain, google.com, it's pointing to that IP address that we see there. That IP address is essentially google.com, to, just to simplify this as simple as possible. That IP address is allowing us to ping. It's allowing us to say, hey, hello, are you there? Can you hear me? Are you active? Can you respond back? And Google is doing that. So we get this reply from that address and it says bytes 32 time four milliseconds and TTL is 108. So that's time to live. Uh, the, and the, the milliseconds, that's how long it's taking to send that information back and forth. If that time, if those milliseconds are very, very high up there, say, you know, right now we're seeing four and two milliseconds, if that's spiking up to 100 or more, or you know 50 or more, if that milliseconds is jumping and all over the place, that can indicate an issue with the network, with connectivity, and it's hard to say at this point, is it Google that's having a network connectivity issue? Is it us that's having a network con connectivity issue? We don't know just yet, but what we can do is just immediately determine Google is online. We are getting a reply from Google. We know that we have an active connection. We know that Google is online because it's replying back to us. So what happens here? Why are we doing this in the first place? This is probably one of the biggest troubleshooting steps that you can immediately go to 
right away anytime somebody is saying that they're having issues connecting to a website they're having issues connecting to maybe your server maybe the internet just isn't working on their computer the very first thing that you can do is ping that computer so if a user calls in and says hey my device isn't connecting to the internet not able to get out to the internet can't get to google whatever the first thing that you're going to do is ask for that computer name now in most typical business environments every computer has some type of name or some type of identifier associated with it and that user so that way you can look up that information in your ticketing system or in any type of documentation that you might have so you can determine the exact name or ip address of that user's device so one thing you could do is ping the name of the computer so if they give you a name like oh and this isn't going to work for us because we don't have this device in our network but let's say uh, you are in a, an organization that has a lot of devices, you have a lot of different departments, you might say maybe this is like a BMS slash uh, sales slash 001. Like that might be a name of a computer. I don't know what BMS is, maybe that's just the name of the company. And then the, the dash sales determines, hey, it's part of the sales depart department. And then the dash 001 says, hey, that's the first computer in that department. And that department might have, you know, hundreds of computers maybe. but. What we could do here is ping the name of that computer. And again, this isn't gonna work for us because we don't have that computer name in our network. But just to show you, if I hit enter on this to ping it, it's gonna say ping request cannot find host BMS-sales-001. Please check the name and try again. Now, this might be an error that you come across when you're in your troubleshooting process. You know, user calls in, they give you that name of their device and they're saying they have internet issues. So you try to ping it and immediately you get this error. Ping, request could not find host. Well, that tells us that device is not connected to the internet. Now the user saying that their device is on, but now we've just determined, hey, there's probably an issue with that user's computer. Maybe it's the network card. Maybe they just need to restart the computer and refresh their network settings. Maybe there's an issue with the actual network switch that's blocking that computer from getting access. But what we've done so far is determine, yes, there is a network issue now this is an instance that i have gone through time and time again a user calls into the help desk and they're saying they can't get out to one of the websites that they get to all the time and they're saying you know my computer's not working the internet doesn't work like that is that is what they basically call and say the internet's not working i can't do anything and that's not exactly true they just can't get to that one website and then if you've ever worked with end users before once one thing's not working, basically everything is not working. And that's, that's often what happens. So user calls, says, hey, can't get to this one website that I need. So everything's not working. And what we do is, you know, what I'll do, I'll ping that computer. I'll make sure, hey, okay, that, that computer is active. It's online. It's working just fine. I can, I can connect to it. I can ping it. it. It's replying back to me. We know it's working. What I'll do next is, what website are you trying to access? That's the question that I'd ask the end user. And once they give me that, I'll ping that website. And if that website does reply back to me, I'll know that, okay, well, not an issue with the website. However, so many times it's come across where the website that they're trying to access was actually down. And it's not our website, you know, it's not a website that we actually support internally, but it's a, a resource that our employees would use. And it's an outside resource, but their website was down. So user just immediately thinks my computer's not working, my internet's down, nothing works. Well, no, that's not actually the case. It's just that website. And I could do a very, very quick troubleshooting uh, step by just pinging that website or going to that website, www and my browser and all that, right? Same thing, but for me, in, when I'm in a technical role, I have my command prompt open 100% of the time. Like when you're in a technical role in any environment, one of the very first things that you do when you get in for the day, you load up all of your you know, standard applications, your ticketing system, your email, your things like that, you're gonna be opening up a command prompt. You're gonna be opening up either command prompt or PowerShell because you're gonna be in that all day in some way. So for me, it's much easier just to ping that computer. Say, hey, are you there? Are you listening? Can you hear me? And maybe it'll reply back, maybe if it doesn't. But that is troubleshooting, like right there, this is one of the most widely used troubleshooting um, techniques, tools, skills that you should have under your tool belt. 
ping is universally like used everywhere all of the time and it can be incredibly helpful for you in troubleshooting issues now i'm going to cover one more troubleshooting issue that you could come across and something that could be very very helpful using the ping command so we're going to go back to our computer and we're going to give you an instance or a use case or a an example that's what that's the word i was looking for we're going to give you an example the example is a user calls in saying my computers the the internet's really really slow it stops working from time to time it seems like it just disconnects randomly i'm able to get the website sometimes and sometimes they don't work that's the issue and i literally this is an issue that i have run across personally hundreds of times like honestly hundreds of times you have users calling in with just the most ridiculous things oftentimes but you will get this issue time and time again and this command with ping in in the command prompt will help you in the troubleshooting process because what this is going to do is going to uh, start a continuous ping meaning it's going to keep pinging the computer over and over and over and over and over again until you tell it to stop if you saw before and we'll go up one to ping.google.com again we'll show you this it's only going to send four requests it sends four requests to google.com and then it stops and that's just basically how it's automatically set up within the windows command prompt it's only doing four requests if you're not getting a response in you know one to four requests then there's probably an issue with that computer with that network potentially one thing that you can do if a user calls in and says you know they're having sporadic issues and things like that is you could just do a continue continuous ping so we're going to do uh, www.google.com and then we're going to do space slash t okay and once we hit enter it's going to continuously ping google over and over and over and over again until i close out the command prompt or hit control c on my keyboard so as you can see it's doing more than four requests again it's going to do this until i tell it to stop essentially if you were to have hundreds or thousands maybe even millions of computers that were pinging google endlessly like that that could almost somewhat be considered a ddos which is a cyber attack if you're not aware so if you're doing this with one computer it's okay you're not going to get blocked google's not going to think that you're ddosing them but if you see what's happening right here on our screen where you know we're pinging google over and over again think about hundreds of other computers doing the same thing sending requests back and forth to google over and over and over again now google can handle these requests just fine but maybe your organization couldn't so if hundreds of people were pinging you know your your organization over and over and over again from you know hundreds of computers outside right it could cause an issue in your network that is essentially what if you ever heard the term ddosing this is kind of like a i'm, I'm just drawing like very like similar like close similarities to try to explain like what a ddos kind of a, essentially looks like and just to i guess draw these comparisons so if that makes sense let me know in the comments if it doesn't make sense also let me know in the comments and i'll do a whole video where we walk through ddos because it's really really cool it's not something cool that you should do it's just it's 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 an interesting thing that you can do anyway back to the ping continue continuous ping we should say it's still running it's still going this whole time i've been talking and it's, it's just going and going and going and going it's not it's not going to stop until i tell it to i just I just scrolled way too far there we go so yep as you could see and, and the uh, one thing i want to point out every time it's going to do the same amount of bytes so it's sending a, a, that same um, size of information to that specific address 32 bytes of information saying hey are you there and google's saying yep i'm here because i'm responding uh the time three three milliseconds the time to live uh, you know 100 there 108 the the time it's stayed consistent 3ms 2ms 1ms let's try a different website let's try our website let's do uh ping and I all I did to stop that by the way was control c on my keyboard just control and then c on the keyboard and it'll stop it or I can close out the command prompt and open it back up and start it again if I wanted to but control c will stop any command that is running in the command prompt um, so we're going to ping itcareerquestions.com and we'll, let's just do a continuous and we'll see what happens so my servers are a little bit slower than Google's you can see there uh, the time uh, we have 55 milliseconds 58 milliseconds um, that's a, 
you know, <laughs> with milliseconds, it's not tremendous amounts of time, right? But that is quite a bit of a difference. That's gonna tell me for sure that my website will load slower than Google more than likely. But that's not a, de that's not a definite. That's just telling me, hey, it, there is a slower response time. If that 55 number was up to 355, that would be a big concern for me. Is that an issue with my computer, with my network? Is it an issue with you know the, that website's network? I, I'm, I can't tell at this point, but we've started our troubleshooting process. We're one step of, ahead of where we were previously. So if you, are, can, if you are still running across issues with devices that are running slow, having connectivity issues, at that point, that's probably a good idea to check out that computer in person or remote into that computer, see if anything else weird is going on, um, go through your standard troubleshooting procedures after you've determined, okay, the network is working, maybe it's a little bit slow. There's, there's plenty of other troubleshooting steps that you can take and we'll cover those in future videos because we're gonna be doing a lot, a lot of different videos like this. Anyway, I was trying to make this video shorter than the IP config video because I could not believe that I spent like over 20 minutes talking about IP config and as I look at the time, I started this video 19 minutes and 28 seconds ago. Hopefully it's gonna be a lot less than that after I cut it up and do all the fun stuff, but that's a long time to talk about ping. And I don't know if y'all realize, you know, as I'll start doing some of these videos, they might be a little bit long. And that's because some of these technologies and things, they take a little bit of time to explain. And one of the things that I really wanna do is make sure I'm drawing comparisons with what we're seeing in the real world to how this is actually used in the real world. Why do I need to know about ping? Why do I need to know about IP config? And hopefully I can share a perspective of these different tools, commands, technologies in a way that's as practical and realistic as we can. Because the one thing I wanna try to avoid is being anything like some of the exams out there that you'll see. When you go through those studying, just to pass the exam, and I'm gonna name drop right now, CompTIA A+, right? There's so much information covered on there from a fundamental level that you just don't need to know. From a practical, real world perspective, you don't need to know these things. So my goal is to create an entire series laying down the fundamentals of IT from the most practical, realistic perspective that we possibly can so that you understand what it is that you actually need to know to be effective in a role rather than what you actually need to know to pass an exam which contains a bunch of information that you don't need to know. So that's, that's the goal here, y'all. And that's what IT Career Questions is all about, just helping people find the, their path into the wonderful world of information technology. It's an amazing career field, and hopefully we can help you get into it or find more success. That is the ultimate goal. Pay it forward. So if you found any use out of these videos, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And you don't have to share my videos but share your knowledge. If you have something to share or you can pay it forward, please, by all means, pay it forward. That's one of the things that we do at my job at Anti-Siphon Training with Black Hills Information Security. We do pay forward what you can training. It starts at zero dollars because we believe in giving back to the community. We believe that training should be affordable and accessible to everybody. So we are creating a bunch of new fundamental teachings and training uh, courses so that we can help everybody from the ground up. So a lot of our classes are very cybersecurity focused, very advanced, but we do have a lot of fundamental workshops that are coming out to help lay the groundworks for people who are getting into IT, trying to advance their careers. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. Again, we do a lot of free stuff. That's what it's all about. That's our marketing. We give away stuff all the time. It's very, very different. Something I strongly believe in. Something I've done for the last 11 years now. So that's all I got for today's video. Hopefully you all appreciate the command series so far, even though it's been like, you know, sporadic and anyway. But we'll be doing, uh, I don't know what, which command video we're going to do next. We did IP config. Uh, we done uh, ping. Ooh, man, there's, there's a lot that we can cover within the command prompt alone. And I wanna go over you know, quite a few of them, again, from a fundamental level. So I'm not sure which is the next one that's gonna come out, but hopefully it's not another few months. Hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Anyway, hope you all appreciate today's video. As always, take it easy.